Hello, welcome, welcome everyone to What's New for Administrators 2024. We are so excited to dive in and show you what Seesaw is offering for back to school. My name is Melody and I am the family coordinator here at Seesaw and I will be your host for today. A few housekeeping items before we dive in. If you have any questions during the session that you would like us to answer, please click on the Q&A tab and ask them there. This ensures that we will not miss them. If any questions go unanswered, we will reach out to you and answer these after the webinar. Other comments or ideas can be put in the chat tab so all participants can view them. Find these tabs on the left and right of your screen. The handouts tab includes key takeaways for today's session. This session is being recorded. A link to the recording as well as the handout from this webinar will be shared in a follow-up email 24 to 48 hours after the session is complete. Now, let's meet our panel of presenters. Let's meet our first presenter, Sarah. Sarah started her career as an educator and has a deep passion for creating equitable, inclusive, and high quality instructional experiences. After her time as a teacher and school leader, she transitioned into a career in ed tech, working in curriculum and product strategy, focused on building products that empower educators and engage students. At Seesaw, Sarah is the chief product officer, where she oversees product, curriculum, user experience, and product marketing. Welcome, Sarah. Now, let's meet Erin. Erin, our director of curriculum at Seesaw, has an extensive career in education. She spent nine years teaching in an urban Title I school with majority multi-language learners students before earning her master's in educational leadership from UC Berkeley, focusing on social justice. As a district admin, she served as the TK to five literacy and ELD coordinator for four years. Erin is dedicated to empowering students and families through access and opportunity in education. We are also excited to have with us Gabby. Gabby is the Manager of Curriculum Development and Operations at Seesaw. With a master's degree in elementary education, she has taught in primary classrooms, developed enrichment-focused after-school programs, and supported teachers across the globe, learning how to meaningfully implement educational technology in their classrooms. Her career has been dedicated to creating joyful, and impactful learning experiences to help our youngest learners create positive connections to learning. Next up, we have Brittany. Brittany is a Senior Manager of Product Management at Seesaw, leading the teams responsible for teacher and family engagement, learning insights, and setup and integrations. With over five years at Seesaw, she has worked across the product to develop features that improve administrator workflows and insights and bring families into the learning loop. Before Seesaw, Brittany led product teams at Yelp, focused on consumer research and international experiences, and holds a degree in electrical engineering and computer science from UC Berkeley with a certificate in human-centered design. And rounding out the fantastic five is Daniel. Daniel is a senior product manager at Seesaw. He leads the content and instruction team, which focuses on making it easier for teachers and administrators to discover, deliver, and track instruction at Seesaw. Over the past three years, he's led key initiatives like launching the Seesaw Library, revamping the assigned flows, and upgrading the school and district library to support stronger curriculum alignment. Prior to Seesaw, Daniel led product teams at Mystery Science and Zapier and holds a degree in science, technology, and society from Stanford. 
we have amazing tools available to you and we are so excited to show you. Here is our agenda for today. Seesaw's evolution. Introducing Seesaw instruction and insights. New admin tools and updates for teachers. Site-wide standards. Administrator dashboards and management. Premium instructional tools and curriculum. Let's begin now with our first presenter, Sarah. Hi, everybody. I'm so thrilled to be here with you all today. Thank you, Melody, for the incredible introduction. As you can see, we've got um, really an all-star lineup here today to talk to you about some of the really exciting things that we've built over the past year um, with a specific lens on what we've built for administrators. So I'm going to kick us off by talking about Seesaw's evolution and why we built what we built. But before I do that, I want to talk to you about what hasn't changed this year, um, other than they're on this beautiful slide now, which are our core principles. What's really important to know that um, is that whatever we do at Seesaw, no matter who it's for, whether it's for students directly, for teachers, for families, or for administrators, we're always thinking about these core principles because at the end of the day, we're all here for the same reason. We want positive outcomes for learners, families, and educators. And when we think about what those outcomes um, should be, we think about how do we get there? And we know that to get to these outcomes we want, learning experiences should be joyful, they should be inclusive, and they should be connected. We believe that learning is active and it should be hands-on with a focus on play, especially for our elementary learners. We know that to truly drive outcomes, we need all learners to see themselves and be represented in curriculum barriers to entry need to be removed. Um, and a student, a student feels a sense of belonging in what they do. And last but certainly not least, at Seesaw, even as um, an education technology company, we really believe that technology should be about bringing people together. It should not be about heads and screens. Um, in fact, technology should only be used when technology makes the most sense. And that's why we have this value of really making sure that the role technology plays is in giving, is in giving students a support system, making sure families and administrators and educators more generally are part of the learning experience as active participants. So why do people come to Seesaw and how, what has kind of been the foundation of who we are? So Seesaw is a learning experience platform. We're built specifically for elementary schools and we're designed to keep everyone in the learning loop to facilitate joyful and connected student learning. Many of you may have adopted Seesaw for one or more of these reasons, whether it be joyful instruction and student learning, family engagement, differentiation and accessible learning, authentic assessment via digital portfolios, or insights and data-driven instruction. What we know is that these are critical priorities for schools and districts, and we want to realize the impact that can be had with Seesaw um, as effectively as possible. And so our evolution has really been about how do we support one or more of those five things for all of you in the best way possible. And when you look back kind of to the early days of Seesaw, Seesaw really got started with the teacher use case at the center of everything. Um, we started really as a digital portfolio where teachers could capture evidence of student learning and share it with families. During the pandemic, Seesaw shifted to a focus on remote learning, really making sure that the teacher and at the school level um, that that impact could be realized. Over the past couple of years, we've you know kind of gone back to the roots of Seesaw. Seesaw's digital portfolio has always been about these amazing multimodal learning tools. And we really started thinking about how do we make it easier for teachers and more effective for teachers to incorporate these multimodal tools in their instruction. But again, when you look at the you know 2008 until through through now, um, we've really kept this laser focus on teachers and kind of school level implementation and about and you know we, we maintain that and we will continue to do that but about a year ago um you know after talking to many of you all we knew that we needed to do more to support implementation at scale 
and on in bigger settings than just schools. We knew Seesaw could have such a big impact. Many of you were making it happen kind of despite the lack of um, real dedicated product support to get you there. And that's why, you know, over the past year and into our future, we really started thinking about what can we do to support administrators at implementing Seesaw at scale to drive meaningful change family in family engagement, in student learning and instruction, in differentiated and accessible learning, all of those things we talked about that are the reasons that you all adopted Seesaw to begin with. So now when you look at you know, who Seesaw is, we really are designed to support the full elementary experience with multiple district level solutions. And you're gonna see lots and lots of things in Seesaw um, that really support kind of the full elementary experience across an entire district. What's really important to us, though, is not just what do we do and what are all the features we have, but what are the outcomes that we're driving? And we know that the right elementary learning experience powered by the right tools can help school systems address some of their biggest challenges. And we're really proud about these outcomes. Um, we, you know, if you look at it, almost all teachers feel that they, um, that Seesaw helps their joy and satisfaction, of their job satisfaction. Seesaw improves equity and supports diverse learners and helps build uh, lasting, meaningful family relationships. These outcomes are incredibly, incredibly important to us. I think equally important is the third party research that has supported the um, has supported the outcomes that Seesaw has that using Seesaw has on on student learning outcomes as measured via test scores. So you can take a look if you want to go check out our website at the research studies done that correlate the use of Seesaw to um, higher test scores effectively. And that's something that, you know, at the end of the day, we're really here to have those outcomes on students to help you all drive change in your schools and districts. And we're really proud that we've um, not only do we kind of know through our own anecdotal um, experience talking to you all, talking to teachers, talking to students, talking to families, but this has now been validated by third party research as well. So when we you know, when we uh, took on this initiative this year to really think about how to better support administrators in implementing Seesaw across all of their schools to drive the change that they were hoping to see, there were three big categories of needs that bubbled to the top. In, in, administrators needed insights to make data-driven decisions. They needed more customization, management, and integrations and additional learning tools to ensure meaningful standard, standards aligned integration of technology. We know if you're adopting technology and you're putting it in the classroom in front of students, it needs to support your learning outcomes. And um, you know, we wanna make sure that you have the most meaningful tools to do that. So what you're going to see in the rest of this presentation um, from my colleagues are many of the things we've built. But one of the things that's really exciting, and you're gonna learn more about what's included in this, um, is that you know we didn't just build a bunch of new features, we've actually built an entirely new platform tier called Seesaw Instruction and Insights that is specifically designed to support administrators in implementing Seesaw at scale across multiple schools to drive instructional change. Included in Seesaw Instruction and Insights, is inclusive, exclusive, excuse me, uh, they are inclusive also, <laughs> exclusive instructional tools and curriculum to support high quality instruction, the ability to glean deep insights into student engagement and performance on standards, and additional administrator customization, management, and integrations. All of those things that we heard from you all that you needed, we built into our new Seesaw Instruction and Insights platform tier. At the foundation of all of this is the ability to track student learning progress against standards. So for all Seesaw customers, not just our Seesaw Instruction and Insights tier, we're excited to um, talk about one of our foundational improvements this year um, with site-wide standards. All right, thank you, Sarah. Um, and I'm here to talk to you all about an exciting new feature on Seesaw, which is site-wide standards. And before I get into the demo, though, I just wanna talk a little bit about the value that this feature brings to um, folks in this room. And so at the very top, if you're an instructional leader or an admin, um, 
inside of your organization, I think the very first thing it brings is helping Seesaw um, localize to your state's um, uh, or region standards. And so we really want to ensure that TISA works out of the box uh, for your teachers. And that means aligning to your instructional initiatives. And um, whether you're uh, a district operating here in Texas in the US or you're uh, a customer operating in Western Australia, we will now have uh, your standard sets here at Seesaw and we'll support um, over 90 standard sets across the US, uh, Canada, uh, the UK and Australia. And for teachers or for your teachers, um, this launch will save time when measuring student performance against those standards. And so we're about to walk through uh, upgraded experiences for browsing, tagging, and grading activities with standards. And then um, what this also kind of ushers in is a new foundation for us here at CSAL to roll up insights at the school and district level. And we're really excited about the power that will bring you all via the form of insights. And so later in this presentation, my colleague will also share uh, the Learning Insights dashboard and how that's possible. And so before I get to the demo, I just want to emphasize that this is a feature that's available to all customers already. So um, you'll be able to go in and, and try this out. And so let me go ahead and share my screen then and let's see some of this magic. Um, and so where I'm going to start right now is, is, is the district dashboard. And I'm, right now I'm inside of my district settings. And what you'll see is a new uh, tab here, which is all about standards and grading. And uh, for this particular district, I'm, I'm operating out of Texas. And so I've, I've already gone ahead and saved uh, my Texas state standards. In general, though, uh, depending on your location, if you're operating in the US, the UK, Canada, or Australia, we'll try to match you with some predefined uh, standard sets here. Um, but you have the option to add additional ones or modify those as needed. And so I think a great action item um, after this call would be to go into Seesaw and kind of see um, that these are properly loaded up um, for you. Um, the other um, setting that we've added at the district level is the ability to choose a grading scale. So um, for now, we support a four star and a five star scale. Um, and so you have the option to go in and choose the one that best aligns with the needs of your organization. Um, and in general, both of these settings, the way that they work is that they get applied at the district level and then all the schools and all the classes inherit that setting. And so we want to make sure that it's, it's kind of one-stop shop for you all as administrators and you're able to just put a setting and have it flow to your teachers automatically. Um, if you're using CISO in a single school setting or implementation, uh, you can also do this via school-wide setting. And so I'm going to shift gears a little bit here and show um, what this will look like for teachers. And so I've kind of hopped around a little bit, to, but just to orient everyone, I'm now in the Seesaw Library and I'm a second grade teacher inside of that district in Texas. And um, I'm looking for a lesson on math and I'm going to pull up uh, something that I've used before in the past. And that's our our first grade or sorry, second grade lesson on, on counting by fives, tens and, and hundreds. And the, one of the first things you'll notice here is that um, this lesson's automatically correlated to, to TEKS, right, to the Texas standards. And so as a teacher, I can see uh, what's how it's aligned and you know what, what standard code that is. And as I browse and move forward with potentially assigning one of these activities, uh, what's really nice is that, that that standard code that you saw on the previous page gets automatically tagged. And so there's just less work on the teacher. Again, the idea here is we're saving them times and we're kind of bringing in those standards um, that are, are aligned to the to the settings of their district. And so, um, you know, should a teacher choose to uh, add additional standards, they can do that. Um, and what's really nice is they're able to filter down by grade level and potentially subject area here. Um, this is a math lesson. And so let's say that I'm thinking about um, a particular standard around modeling. Um, and so as you can see, results will automatically appear here. So it's a lot easier to kind of drill in and kind of find the correct uh, standards here. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and save this one to kind of show you all what that looks. And so at this point, I've got two standards loaded up into this activity. I'm gonna go ahead and, and save that and assign that out to my students now. And so um, I'm gonna head over to the class experience now as you can see, that activity that we just assigned um, has has been uh, given out to students. And um, as you can see, you know, those standard codes that we tagged are there for teachers as well. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a shortcut just so that we can get a student response out of this. Um, and so let's imagine Amanda, my class, is completing one of these activities. Um, she's watching that video 
And, um, you know, we go ahead and we, we do uh, the correct activities to show you that. I'm just going to put that little squiggle there. So we're going to go ahead and save this uh, student response. And so as you can see now, Amanda submitted a response to the activity we assigned. And what's really great is that as a teacher, as I'm reviewing that work, I'm able to see the standards that are tagged and then assign a grade um, against that. And so in this case, I'm just going to assign some stars here so you can kind of see the color scale here and the um, performance that we're using here. And so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And as a final part of this demo, as a teacher, what I can also now see is that uh, activity in the progress view. And specifically, if I go into the standards view, I'll see how Amanda is doing against those standards that I've tagged and, and the grades that we see. And that's, again, an extension of the product um, that we currently have today and a way for teachers to kind of track student performance at the class level. Um, but what's really exciting is, again, that's the foundation for which um, those insights will be rolled up at the school level and at the district level. And that's what will power our Learning Insights dashboard, which is a great segue to my colleague, Brittany. And I'm going to hand the mic over to her to talk more about those exciting dashboards. All right. Thanks, Daniel. I am excited to talk about the administrator dashboards. And these dashboards are uh, coming from feedback we've heard from you about wanting to have visibility into how teachers are using Seesaw and insights into how students are learning and growing. And so I'm excited that there's actually two dashboards um, that are available in Seesaw Instruction and Insights. There's the Engagement Analytics Dashboard, that will tell you all about teacher usage and engagement, as well as the Learning Insights Dashboard, which will show you student learning and student growth and progress, layering on top of that standards foundation that Daniel just talked about. So I'm going to get into the fun part and actually share this uh, a demo of this dashboard. All right, so I am in a test district. And for this demo, we're going to go back in time and look at last school year so we can look at a full school year. Um, and you can see at a high level the usage in your district at a glance. You can see how students are using Seesaw for posts uh, and also usage by teachers, students, and families. Here you can look at usage uh, per month, so student posts created in the months of the school year. Um, and for our Southern Hemisphere friends, the school year will be January to December. For no Northern Hemisphere, it will be July through July. Um, and you can also see the usage by school. So there's only a few schools in this test district, but in your district, there may be a lot of schools. It will show you usage um, across the schools and things like activities taught, student posts, as well as messages information for your district. I'm going to scroll down to my favorite part of the dashboard. So my favorite part is uh, this area that shows you real student posts. Um, so the real student posts here are showing you the posts that have high impact. Um, these are, as Sarah was talking about, posts that either have voice or video or have family visits. Um, we have seen through our efficacy studies that students have higher test scores when they have Seesaw posts with voice, video, or family visits. And as an admin, you actually get a window into student work. So you can actually see highlighted student posts coming from your classrooms in your school. Um, this is really exciting and gives admins the ability to see um, actual work that is happening across their district. So I'm going to go back into this dashboard. Um, there's a lot more. There's a uh, information about activities usage. So um, for those of you who maybe are using the school and district library, which my colleague will talk about later, you may want to know how many activities are being assigned from the school and district library, or how many Seesaw library activities are being used. That'll be shown in your district dashboard. Um, or if you want to drill into specific activities that are being used, there's uh, going to be a list of all the activities that have been taught in your district, and you can sort it by the number of times that they've been taught, which is uh, another view into usage in your school or district. Um, so um, finally, there's also usage by teachers. So this will help you to understand for a given teacher um, whether they're using Seesaw for activities and also to help you identify teachers that are using Seesaw uh, really exceptionally. And this will allow you to um, really help them to model for other teachers in your district or to support teachers that may need more help. Uh, I'm going to switch tabs and actually also show uh, a version of the school 
analytics dashboard. So this is a um, what the engagement analytics will look like for a school. Um, it is also accessible from the district dashboard. You can click into the school to get into this. Um, the school dashboard will be available for Seesaw for Schools customers as well for all customers. Um, the rest of what I'm showing is Seesaw instruction and insights. But this one um, you will already have available in your dashboard if you are a Seesaw customer. Um, so there's an overview as well. You can look at student posts as well. Um, what I think is really exciting about the school level view is being able to see usage by class. So again, you can see how Seesaw is being used in the classes in your school and identify classes that are really using Seesaw in an exemplar way, as well as classes that may need more support. Um, again, as a school level administrator, you'll also be able to see posts, real student work, and have that window into the classroom. Um, and finally, for the school level administrator, we, we know that family engagement is often an important part of your understanding of your school usage. And so we have a special module for family engagement as well that highlights family usage of Seesaw within the school. All right, but there's more. This was just one of the analytics available to you. I will now share um, a July view of the Learning Insights dashboard. So let's say I'm a district that started using Learning Insights and Standards in July, and I wanna understand how my students are using um, Seesaw and how what their student growth and progress is like. So here I can look at July and understand um, which posts and how many posts are being tagged with standards in my school and district, um, as well as how many posts are being graded um, of the ones that are tagged. So purple is posts not tagged, uh, gray is ungraded, and then teal is graded posts. So this can help me at a glance understand if standards are being used and how to support my teachers to better utilize standards across my district. Then there's a bunch of modules about standards performance. You can look at standards performance at the school level. So again, this will be a list of all of your schools as well as uh, performance by standards on the four or five star grading that your district has chosen. Um, and again, you'll be able to see real student work tagged with standards. So you'll be able to see an example of student posts and you can click into these and interact with the student posts themselves, which is a really amazing window. Um, and there's a few more modules for standards performance by subject. Let's say you have a focus on mathematics or technology education. You can uh, drill in more closely to specific subjects, um, as well as standards performance overall for the standards overall. So in this one, I'm going to drill in just to give you a little bit of a sense of what else you could see here. So you could sort, for example, by standards that have been graded most frequently in your district and understand which standards are being used across your district and also an overall sense of performance within your district, which will help you understand um, how students uh, can continue to grow. Uh, and finally, this Learning Insights tab is also available at the school level. And uh, what I'll specifically call out is you'll be able to see standards performance by class as well. So again, all of the things that we just saw for school, you can also see per class. Um, and you can also export all of the data if you would like to, um, to use it in other forms uh, or with other systems that you may have for thinking about grades. All right, so that is all the exciting stuff that is coming out related to admin oversight and insights into learning. And I'm excited to pass it over to Gabby uh, to talk about administrator management. Thank you, Brittany. Um, we've heard from admin that they want flexible organizational structures to meet the needs of their individual districts. And within instruction and insights, admin will now have the ability to customize and manage Seesaw at scale. From building out more integration options to support the tools that you already use, like Canvas and Schoology, to curating and organizing the school and district library to better serve the need for customization, our new school and district library collections allow many ways to leverage the ability to curate and organize the school and district library to better align with the ways that admin and teachers really want to leverage Seesaw in the classroom and really help teachers quickly discover the right resources aligned to the district initiatives. So now I'm going to jump into a demo to show you an example of what a school and district library can look like. Let me share my screen. Okay, 
So for the sake of this demo, let's pretend that I am a kindergarten teacher and I am looking for ways to provide my students with additional practice opportunities that align with the concepts and skills that I am focused on while teaching my core curriculum. Thanks to the way that my new school and district library is now set up, I can quickly drop in and explore lessons that support my ELA block. And to do that, I can first click on collections to see the various collections of activities that my district has created. And as you can see in this example, my school has organized this library by core curriculum that we use within our district. My school uses Amplify CKLA, and because I am a kindergarten teacher, I will click here. Now I can explore lessons that are aligned to the various units within this curriculum. I know I am teaching unit two, uh, the five senses, and here I can find a set of handpicked lessons to explore. My district has even left a um, description of the unit, pulling out all of the pertinent information from my curriculum's teacher guide, where I can see the duration of the unit, the standards that are assessed by the end of that unit, as well as the learning objective, which can help guide my supplemental lesson selections from here. Once I find a lesson that I wanna use, I can just jump in and assign it directly to my students from here and follow that same pathway for other subject areas or curriculum that I'm teaching. Again, there are various ways that the school and district library can be organized, um, whether it be by curriculum, like I just showed, subject area, thematic unit, or whatever organizational preference the school or district chooses. Whichever you choose, teachers can explore lessons that support their instructional blocks and instructional formats. With the ability to customize this library, school or district admin can now leverage this space to highlight district approved content for their teachers to use, which helps to ensure that everybody is aligned and can quickly find the resources that they, they want while also saving teachers time. We know things change and the desire to want to add or modify content arises, and it's really easy to continue to customize this space. Admin can click on the new button here to create additional collections, and they can also click organize to move and reorder the existing collections. And once you're inside of a collection, they can click on the three dots here to edit collection um, details and provide descriptions. Um, they can color code and more to help their teachers really understand how to use this space. They can also provide structure to this space by clicking organize to create new um, sections where they have the ability to add names and descriptions as well as the ability to um, reorder and group lessons in meaningful ways. So this feature is available to Seesaw Instruction and Insight customers where folks can organize their school and district library themselves, or they can also leverage our paid service offering to have Seesaw's curriculum experts set up their school and district library collections to align with their um, district created um, curriculum or their core curriculum providers content. And now I will pass the mic back over to Sarah to share more about the premium instructional tools and curriculum. Thanks so much, Gabby. Um, so Gabby just showed you kind of all of the ways that you can organize and align content within Seesaw to your core curriculum or to even kind of create um, a scope and sequence of your own within Seesaw. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's inside those lessons to make um, see that makes Seesaw experiences so magical for students. We know kind of the heart of Seesaw are these multimodal tools and we also know that as, you know, the science of reading and research backed practices um, become more and more important um, as a more and more important part of instruction, teachers and administrators need more tools um, to integrate technology meaningfully towards these instructional ends. So we're excited as part of Seesaw Instruction and Insights to introduce five premium instructional tools. The first one is called Read With Me, um, which is a tool where 
um, teachers can enter any text. So they can take their anchor text from their core curriculum. They can take a passage that they've written. It can be a student sample of work. It can be something that they've grabbed from another source. They can add it to Seesaw and choose the Read With Me um, tool to have the passage read aloud. And as it is read, um, the words will be highlighted. This is great for multilingual learners, for students who are learning to read, um, or students who may get additional um, accommodations or modifications for their work. The second tool I'm really excited about um, is our FlexCard tool. And I think of these as like magical flashcards. If you think of a flashcard or a flip card as something that has two sides, these have many, many sides and on every side of them, uh, on any side of them can be a word, um, audio, or an image. These can be used countless ways across the subject areas. I'm really excited for you to see um, some examples of them in some of our newest content. Our third tool, um, we know that multimodal tools are amazing and that's one of the ways that students can express their, their voice through Seesaw, but sometimes, sometimes too many choices um, is not a good thing. And so we are now allowing um, the, the author of the curriculum, whether it's your teacher or somebody else in your district, um, the author of the activity to choose which tools are available on each page of the Seesaw activity to make sure that the tools that are selected on the screen are available on the screen to students are aligned with the instructional objectives of that particular page. Two more tools. Um, really, really excitingly, we have um, one of our one of our biggest new releases, our reading fluency assessment, um, which is an AI generated or sorry, an AI supported tool that allows for teachers to collect data on their students reading fluency um, in real time across all of their students at the same time. So if you think about kind of the traditional case where you need an adult sitting in front of a student and listening to them read to assess their fluency, um, those days are no longer while we still endorse that and we know that's an important part um, of some reading assessments. This is a way to collect formative data about your students reading fluency in real time. You can see um, a kind of percentage correct at the end. You'll see um, omissions and insertions highlighted, and you can see a report on the student level. So what you can do as a teacher, you've got 20 kids in your class who just read a passage. The, the class level report will quickly show you kind of who needs that additional support and who's got it. Last but certainly not least, we've expanded our formative assessment functionality to include a free response assessment so that you can ask questions and have students um, write a free response. Um, you can choose auto graded or you can choose to just quickly grade it right afterwards and that grade will roll up um, into your progress dashboard and then into those amazing learning insights uh, dashboards that Brittany showed you earlier. So all of these tools were really built um, on a, an extremely rigorous research foundation. You see a visual here of the reading rope and how all of our tools tie in to support these different literacy skills specifically, although the tools also support in the other subject areas. This is a just really great visual to see, you know, a little bit into the process of Seesaw of how and why we build the tools. We know though that especially when implementing instructional initiatives across an entire school, across an entire district, across a wide range of teachers with different expertise um, and different uh, years of experience, you need more sometimes than just the tools. You actually need the content and the curriculum that effectively leverages those tools so that you can have research-based, pedagogically sound instruction. And so I'm excited to turn the mic over to Erin to talk to you about the curriculum packages we've developed to help you with your instructional initiatives. Thank you, Sarah. So like Sarah said, and you've heard so many folks from our team now sharing about, we have worked really hard at Seesaw to make sure that we continue to improve the platform. And in the last couple of years, we've been adding to our curriculum offerings. So our Seesaw library has such incredible content on top of that, what I'm gonna focus on right now with you is our supplemental curriculum packages, both in Seesaw Early Literacy and in Seesaw ELD. Um, but first, Seesaw Early Literacy. So Seesaw Early Literacy has over 600 lessons. That's right, 600 lessons. Um, and the reason why we did this was because one, we know that there's not any one curricula out there that's going to give everything to everyone um, that all students need to be successful. So what we thought about were what were these kind of 
huge pillars within early reading and writing that we wanted to make sure to address. And how could we do that in a way that was very systematic, explicit, scaffolded, and differentiated to support all the instruction that you are doing or that your teachers are doing inside the classrooms um, and the type of work that you're supporting at each of your sites or across your district. And of course, because it's Seesaw, this doesn't feel like maybe that road or repetitive or could actually sometimes be boring content um, that students are kind of, you know, coming at after a while working on these same skills. What we're offering with Seesaw is a way for students to really own that learning space, to use our multimodal tools to really shine. They can hear themselves, they get to hear that modeling. Um, and it's something that we've been able to do um, with great success so far. Another part about Seesaw Early Literacy is that uh, the rest of our content has lesson plans in the Seesaw Library. For the Seesaw Early Literacy package, what we did is we took these, as you saw, about 10 collections right now. This is growing, but 10 collections across these five pillars. And we wanted to make sure to include both lesson plans, but also a teacher's guide that provides week by week implementation support. Because this is supplemental, we are not supplanting. We are not trying to get rid of any of that core content space. The whole point is that after they've had this explicit instruction with your core curricula, opportunities to practice, here's more kind of research-based, evidence-backed approaches to working within this content. We've provided a scope and sequence, also a research document like Sarah showed earlier with Scarborough's Reading Rope. Um, we've also been following Dr. Louisa Motz's research from the Science of Reading, as well as uh, Dr. Wiley Blevins to make sure that all of our content has that research-backed approach. But I can just talk about it all day. Instead of doing that, I'm actually going to go ahead and show you some of these lessons. There are so many pieces of content that we could look at. Um, and for the sake of time today, I'm going to focus in on just a few. Uh, the first one, this is one of our letter books from our Letter and Wordbook Treehouse collection, brand new for back to school. And like Sarah said, she was pointing out some of those tools that we have, including focus mode. And here's what it looks like in action. So usually what you would see here is a glow pen, one of our top favorites here at Seesaw, um, or ways of changing the color, different types of video inputs, et cetera, that students could be using. We really want students to focus on listening to this book that we've created special for them that has all these examples of words that start with the letter H. So there are no tools here except for the hand tools so that I can click this video. The H book. After I watch the video um, as a student, what then happens is I can actually practice reading the story page by page. Same thing, this focus mode is in here. So I'm not gonna get to spend as much time drawing all over the page, which would have been super fun, but I wanna make sure that I focus on the skill at hand, uh, which is to actually identify each of the letters, to record myself doing this, H, H. I can listen to myself, try it again. And all the great things that you know and love about our content so far is here within these curriculum packages. So English and Spanish audio directions in the top left corner. We're still gonna make sure that we're following those practices on ways to support students, whether they're multilingual learners um, or students who are coming here right at grade level. We're also looking here at this little help button. That's one way that we can support students if they're kind of struggling with this content. We try to think of ways to scaffold the content throughout for our students. Again, like we mentioned, there are these uh, lesson plans at the bottom, including resources that you can use. We got a lot of great feedback when we were testing all this content to make sure that we include all of those resources here for teachers to use. So it's really quick and easy for them to gather. This is a word book from the Letter and Word Book Treehouse. So as students are progressing in the scope and sequence, or as you're following your own core content scope and sequence and supplementing with our content, you can pull out books that exactly match where the student is at and where you're at in your core content. Here, the students now have a full word that I'm gonna record using my frame, um, but I can also check myself. This helps again with our multilingual learner students who maybe wanna make sure they have a little bit more of a concrete representation of the word, um, or also just as an early reader, understanding that I read that word correct, it gives me a visual reminder of what uh, the word actually was. So this is here, there's over 50 of these total. Um, and another collection that I wanna highlight in the early literacy um, before we jump into ELD is our high, fre high frequency word collection. We got so much feedback from um, all of our incredible teachers out there. If there's any of my literacy coordinators in the house, you're going to love this. Uh, what this is, is with our high frequency word collection, which is 109 high frequency words, by learning these words, students will have seen 50% of words in children's literature. So what we're giving you here is not just one activity, but one, two, three, four, I don't know, like 10-ish activities for students to practice this word. 
but with that seesaw magic. So we're still going to analyze, which the science of reading says is really important to do, but I'm gonna to get to like record myself doing a video of it. I'm gonna to get to turtle here. I have a formative assessment that's in here for me so that I can check my work as a student immediately getting that feedback. Um, and all of this feels very age appropriate. None of this is feeling scary or like overwhelming. And as a teacher who may be new to the science of reading still, I can feel rest assured that all this is research backed and also that it's very appropriate for my students to use. And it's going to have that kind of impact that I'm hoping for. Another quick one to show you here um, is some of my favorites. Uh, we have the ability to build some of our work manipulatives they may even have in the classroom so you can get that kind of real world exposure. Our formative assessment tool is built throughout. So again, students, instead of having to wait for that worksheet to come back to them um, or that workbook to get actually scored, they can see it right here and actually get that feedback. And the teacher is going to see that on the other side as well. Um, and then we have our show what you know section down here. Again, all of the resources are there for them. This is just one of 109 of high frequency words, but on top of that, this is one of over 600 lessons that's inside our early literacy package. For the sake of time, um, and because you can learn about all of this on our website, which we will link for you later, I wanted to jump over to Seesaw ELD. So Seesaw ELD, uh, we're really, really excited to release this curriculum package at the same time. We know that reciprocity between students actually being able to speak language and then learn the language. So we see that in early literacy, but we also see that as an ELD as a standalone. Um, and again, this is a space where as multilingual learners um, become such a large demographic within all of our districts, it's an area where folks are feeling like they could really use more support. And that's something we always wanna do here at Seesaw is make sure that we're meeting the needs of folks that are using us and loving us, um, especially where it makes sense right for us to be in. So we have as a start 480 lessons for Seesaw ELD. We are covering ELA, science, social studies and math across kindergarten through fifth grade. And because it's ELD, they're practicing this, these content standards across uh, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So you'll, you'll see it in a few minutes. Um, but again, it's Seesaw. So this is a safe space for students to practice in. They have a lot of autonomy, again, in the types of tools that they're using. There's a lot of built-in scaffolding for them that students won't be able to see just from the way that it's being assigned to them. It doesn't really call them out. So they're able to take kind of deeper risks here, which is really important for our multilingual learner students. And they can hear themselves. They can hear the modeling, hear themselves, compare themselves to the model, and then immediately try it again, which, again, is very unique compared to other content that's out there. Uh, similar to the way you saw with Seesaw Early Literacy, we have lesson plans like we do in our Seesaw library, but we're also offering a teacher's guide. We're going to give you a content catalog, which is just going to show you all the different types of lessons that are in there, the research document. Um, and in a second, I'll show this to you. But you're also going to see that the lessons build over their language level. So they increase in rigor in the language. So the content's going to be aligned to both your state standards, but also to the WIDA framework or your ELD framework that you use within your state. And the lessons increase over that language rigor. So first entering and beginning, uh, there's a little bit more scaffolding, a simple language, moving on to developing and expanding where the language increases, and then bridging and reaching, there's less scaffolds, uh, less visual models there. They can always go back and check themselves, but less there on the page. Um, and the idea is the student is producing much more language by that point. And then one more thing to shout out is just the sheer amount of work that went into this, um, but also the collaboration with uh, an incredible team of experts. So it was both our, and for early literacy, we had like speech and language pathologists and literacy experts. For ELD in particular, we had both language and content experts, because again, the idea is that students are entering the language based within that content, um, so that academic content. So these folks were just four of the ones there. You can see a few more listed, um, but we weren't just giving it to them at the end. We actually worked side by side with them the entire time from the beginning of figuring out what kind of vocabulary we wanted to do to how the sentences were presented to the increase in rigor across the language demands. So really, really special work that we did with them. Um, and then what this is looking like with 480 lessons, um, here is one example. This is an ELA second and third grade lesson. So again, it's going to be second and third grade content standards. This is developing and expanding, which is kind of those middle ranges of language development um, on the WIDA framework in particular, but again, still connected to your state's ELD framework. Um, and then it feels similar to the way you might see our other lessons. There's a gradual release model that's happening here. So you're going to have an introduction. This is going to have some 
real world images. It's going to introduce the vocabulary and sentence structures that the students are going to be using. Then because this is ELA, we created these beautiful either narrative text or informational text, depending on the content standards. We've broken it up into parts. This is second and third grade. So these parts are a little bit longer. This is 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and again, you're going to start to see some of these amazing premium tools that Sarah shared about. So we have our um, student here is the rabbit plants different. And what will happen here is we'll actually get to see some of our seesaw stars, which we have an incredible team of people working with uh, these families that are going to represent both students. Um, and we often find and research shows that students that see other students that look like them or seeing children actually do the same kind of modeling uh, helps them to feel more confident and comfortable in it. Um, and we'll have read with me here on the page as well for students to follow along with the tools. Here's those flex cards for students to get to practice um, some of the language that they're going to be working on. Um, and again, I just love pointing out our formative assessment that we built into every single lesson because again, this gives students that feedback right away um, so that they can make sure that they get it um, and they have that feedback instead of having to wait. This is just one of the 480 lessons that's there for ELD. We have a special connect section, which has those seesaw stars again. This is something that can be done with a partner in the classroom, but also at home. We often know that one way we want to honor students and the experience they're bringing is to also honor the family and that engagement piece that Sarah talked about earlier is so important to us. So we're actually building this into every single lesson that we do. Um, and this is one way that the families can participate and also maybe learn some English if they themselves are multilingual learner. Um, and again, this kind of show what you know reflection space. And each one looks a little different depending on the grade level or the content. So we have kindergarten, this is entering and beginning. The sections are a little bit shorter, a little bit uh, smaller there because of our kindergarten students, um, but kind of a similar structure. So teachers will feel really confident teaching these and students will be able to quickly pick them up and really grow in their expertise. So this is Seesaw ELD. Um, I'm really excited to um, have this out for all of you. Again, you can check out our website if you are um, you know, curious about learning more about these they're really, really exciting to have out there. And I'm going to hand it over to Melody to close us out. Wonderful. I am so excited. Well, everyone, that concludes the presenter portion of our webinar. We have some resources to help you learn even more about instruction and insights. Head to our teacher training site to find Quick Start PDF guides, short training videos, view recorded webinars, and more. Our goal is to provide you and your teachers with easy ways to learn, not anything that will bog you down or confuse you. Teacher's time is far too valuable for us. And we just want to let you know that there are also handout tabs that you will find in a link on this particular site. Thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you again here at Seesaw.